Rob Nation. Let's go, baby. What a day. What a day it is. Incredible day. We are coming to you live from the Toyota Lounge. We're driven by your front front range Toyota stores. Toyota, the official vehicle of DMVR. How about that? Man, this is crazy. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. This is legitimately crazy. Um, I, I'm not going to mention any names, but like, the sponsors that we used to get when I, when we started this company, mm -hmm. which I'm eternally grateful for them. They believed in us when no one else did. Yeah. But compared to like Toyota. And Coors Light. And Coors Light. Yeah. Uh, it just, this morning I was just like, man, we did that. Yeah. It's crazy. You guys did that. We couldn't have done it without the amazing audience that we have. Uh, shout out to Toyota for believing in the vision. Um and uh, yeah, man, the Toyota Lounge. Look at these mic flags. I know we're official now, bro. bro. <laughs> we got like, do we have to like I don't know pronounce names correctly and not curse now? We're gonna put that to the <laughs> test today. <laughs> um, shout out to the Toyota chat also. Oh yeah, let's go. Look at that. What's up, guys? Welcome into the show. We are presented by Illegal Pete's. Everyone's go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. It's Monday, so you know we have a ton. A stuff to get into. Got some recruiting stuff. Uh, we'll shout out CU Women's Basketball, whose season has finally come to an end after a run in the NCAA tournament. We got spring game news. Finally. finally. <laughs> uh, but we start today with two massive, massive, massive additions to Colorado and Coach Prime's coaching staff. <coughs> First off, the man didn't lie. He said he was coming in March. Last day. March 31st, he baby. He shows up. I respect that. You guys, I told you guys why I love game time. I procrastinate everything. Yep. So I would do the same thing if I was like, oh, yeah, Jake, I'll get you that written piece by March. Yeah. That's uh, when I would do it, March 31st. Um, so Coach Sapp is here. And then Coach George Hageman, former IMG offensive lineman, joins sure the staff. that's the right pronunciation? Uh, I think so. <laughs> How would you pronounce it? Uh, he jamming. <laughs> Jamming, jamming. Is he from I Jamaica? Jam it with you. <laughs> Let's go and start off with Coach Sapp, though. Another gold jacket in Boulder. Um, two we're up to. And, you know, we talked to him at the Super Bowl. We kind of got some insights from him there. He said he was coming. He didn't lie. He's here. But officially with the team yesterday, as the whole team, by the way, returned from spring break on time. No, like, drama, nothing. Coach Prime was very happy with that. Yes. Uh, same could not be said about the last break they were on. What break was that? Uh, winter? Oh, no. yeah. Well, that's when we lost yeah, Chick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, great, great to see Coach Sapp there. Um, great to see just all the new additions. Everyone there, everyone with energy. Um, I just – I think that – Obviously, we're going to need the NCAA to come through with that rule that allows analysts and QCs to do whatever they want. Yep. But no matter what, I just can't imagine being like a defensive line recruit and being able to go to like some nerd boy school <laughs> uh, with lame coaches, or you could go to Colorado and be coached by Deion Sanders and Warren Sapp. Yep. It's pretty amazing. Crazy. Um, yeah, so we'll see exactly what Coach, what Coach Sapp's role is moving forward. He's got an office, though. He was very proud about that. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, he uh, was at the team meeting yesterday. So what's up to all the D linemen, uh, all the guys who, some of them who have returned. But Coach Hageman, you know, I don't want to minimize Coach Sapp being in Boulder, but Coach Hageman is a massive, massive move for Coach Prime. Yes, dude. Um, what's crazy is, like, he was being mentioned in the offensive line coach conversations. Yeah. Um, because of not only his value as an offensive line coach, but his pipelines into not just IMG, but honestly, all, you know, all of Florida and, you know, everything that goes on down there. And mm -hmm. just the way that Coach Prime has kind of tapped into Florida – uh, has been very obvious. He was always going to have a pipeline into Florida, but getting Coach Riz, uh, getting Coach Hegeman, like these are big time additions. Uh, and 
I think the fact that two people of, of those of that caliber are willing to come on in the positions that they did says a lot about Coach Prime and you know the value that people see in just wanting to be a part mm-hmm. of what he's doing. So Coach Hageman, a former third round draft pick in the nineteen ninety four draft class out of NC State. NC State having a moment. Shout out to the Wolf Pack. Shout out to friend of the show, Scotty McCreary, diehard uh, NC State Wolfpack fan. Let's go. Shout out to you, Scotty. Uh, but Coach Hageman played with Coach Prime in Dallas. He was drafted by the Cowboys in 94. When Coach Prime got there in 95, he played there until 97. Coach Hageman left, went and played for the Frankfurt Galaxy after that. Um, and then the Philadelphia Eagles. And then the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He actually uh, retired from the NFL right <coughs> before they won that Super Bowl. Uh, with the you know the Tampa two, all those guys, Coach mm-hmm. Sap, basically. So he did play with Coach Sap too. Dang, I didn't make that connection. I, I definitely knew the Coach Prime connection. Mm-hmm. Double there. Uh, Super Bowl thirty champion was a freshman All American nineteen ninety two. Second team All ACC in nineteen ninety three. He was actually a part of Coach Prime's Prime Truth Academy as well. Mm. I think he was the athletic director there. Okay. Um, after that, he went and worked for the NFLPA as the senior manager of player services. And then he went on to IMG Academy, became their offensive line coach. Someone I mean, what comments. a background. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's been everywhere. Uh, huge addition. Someone in the comments said, Jake has no idea who Scotty McCreary is. I don't. Is. It's a shame. I can learn right now. Country star. <clears throat> yeah, former, definitely. Uh, nah, I'm former American good. Idol winner or made a deep run I'm like good. NC State. I'm good. All right. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like you should have some more respect for someone who's been to the DNVR bar and like also has platinum records. Of course, shout out to him. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa knows. Well, yeah. <laughs> Alyssa's not even paying attention. Nope. All um, right. But two massive additions to this coaching staff. It's really rounded out nicely. Dare I say it's complete? Does anyone else come? Coach Ocho? Well, there is one more. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it this time. Go for it. Oh, I can't. Okay. <laughs> but I'm saying there, there, there is at least one more uh, addition that I'm aware of. Stay tuned. Um, but, yeah, Coach Hageman, of course, at IMG. And we'll get into recruiting a bit later in the show. But uh, today it came out that 2025 four-star offensive lineman Caden Strayhorn out of IMG is going to be visiting Colorado this weekend. Uh, originally from Detroit, but plays for IMG. He put out a top 12 at the beginning of the month. No CU, but he's coming. If you run into a Buffalo, you might catch a stray horn. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) You like that one. That was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I'll take it. (laughs) Jesus, man. Um, But already kind of paying dividends, that connection, I guess. Hell, yeah. We'll see what else comes through down the pipeline. Let's talk about the spring game, but first, shout out to our new friends over at Toyota. Hell yeah. Your front range Toyota stores are excited to begin our new partnership with DMVR. Toyota is the official vehicle of DMVR. Uh, Toyota, I mean, you guys know what it is. Super reliable. The Forerunner, probably one of, if not the most like popular vehicle out in Colorado. It's like a mountain person's vehicle. Oh, yeah. A mountain person. <laughs> I don't know. But Is that like a Yeti? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Any Yetis in the chat? Do you drive Forerunners? <laughs> Please let us know. Forerunners like a dream car for me. It's a lot of my friends have gone the Forerunner route recently. Yeah. And I drive a Toyota and I absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. And I, long before this partnership, I internally and like with Allie decided like I'll always drive a Toyota. Yeah, I they- had a, maybe I won't throw them under the bus. I had a competitor's vehicle before this one Uh uh-huh and like i made so many trips to mechanics and Mm -hmm. just like stupid little things would break like oh the window doesn't roll down anymore it's like what the hell my toyota i don't even know if i need to knock on wood i've never had to get anything fixed on it yeah super reliable had it for like four years they're goaded i yeah i could not recommend toyota enough um but shout out toyota not just the Forerunner, but they got tons of great options. Visit your Front Range Toyota stores at a location near you, AutoNation Toyota, Arapaho, and Centennial, Corwin Toyota, and Boulder. 
Grove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson Toyota East in Aurora, and Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Shout out Toyota. They're a proud, proud, proud partner of CU Athletics and the official vehicle of DNVR. So we talked about like having a, an ice cold Coors Light at a baseball stadium, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking you, uh, you know, you drive your Toyota. Maybe you get a ride in a Toyota. Mm-hmm. So then you can have more Coors Lights. Mm-hmm. Drink several Coors Lights. What else are you going to need? Um, seeds. Going to need seeds. And you guys have heard of this uh, Cedary before. Chinook. Yeah, the Cedary, goats. They hooked us up long ago, and now they're officially a partner of DNVR. So shout out to them. Uh, head over to ChinookCedary.com. Use the code BUFFS. For 20% off your order. These are the best seeds ever. Jake, what's your favorite? I mean, I, I love the hatch green chili ones, yep. but the uh, pepper parmesan, I think, are my favorite ones from Ooh. Chinook. So I also love the hatch green chili ones. They're probably tied for first, but I also love the barbecue. Yeah, you're a big barbecue. Yeah. Smokehouse barbecue Smokehouse guy. Smokehouse barbecue absolutely pops. Uh, so get over to our friends at Chinook Cedary. This is cool because like these are true listeners of the show definitely that happen to have a business uh and i love supporting a business like this so uh if you want some seeds for baseball season which everyone needs of course get over to chinook cedary that's c-h-i-n-o-o-k cedary.com use the code buffs b-u-f-f-s you guys are familiar with that one for 20 percent off your order shout out chinook or what'd you call him the first time <laughs> Jeez, I, I forgot. nope not doing it there's too many names on this show. It's so good. Uh, all right. Damn. Everyone's been asking what? Nessa said uh, they've been driving their 2000 Camry for 21 years. I'm telling you, man. It's a great investment in a Toyota. Yeah, one of my best friends in college drove a Camry until basically the wheels fell off. And then he <laughs> went the forerunner route. So, Shout out to Toyota, Toyota fam. All right, we finally got spring game news, so you guys, you guys can stop asking me. Um, I didn't know. Where's Cormani, though? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see him in the video yesterday. Where could he be? Uh-oh. Um, but finally, spring game news. Spring week news, actually. Where do we even start with this? I guess we'll just start with this. Uh, so tickets go on sale tomorrow if you're a student, Wednesday for the general public. They will go on sale at 1 p.m. our time. 15 bucks for the bowl seating, 25 bucks for the Byron White East Club seating, 5 bucks for students. Uh, the game will be broadcast live on the Pac-12 network. Wait, should I let you finish? No, lots I... to get, yes, okay. lots to get right. in here. Uh, we will have the spring game, of course. Right after that, they're having a concert with none other than Lil Wayne at the Hell CU yeah. Event Center. Tickets go on sale for that. Uh, today they're already on sale. They start at twenty nine fifty, and this show will be at the CU Event Center. So after the spring game, make your way across the street, catch Lil Wayne. More guests to be announced also for that. Ooh. So stay tuned. More guests. Got any predictions? <clears throat> Deion Sanders Jr. That would be. Could you imagine? So lit. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I truly don't know. Great guess. I don't even want to try and guess now. That's the best possible guess. Shador Sanders? No. <laughs> no? I don't think so. Where do we start, though? Pac-12 Network or Lil Wayne the whole week? I want to start with Pac-12 Network. Go for it. Um, <clears throat> this is embarrassing <laughs> on their part. That's uh, one word to describe it. Did you see the metaphor that I used for it on social today? Yes. So I said, this is like you're together... You know, in our case, you're together with a girl and the two of you are like, you're like, hey, my favorite band is playing at Red Rocks. Mm -hmm. Let's go. But the tickets are pretty expensive. So you're like, I'll buy my ticket. You buy your ticket. They're like, right. OK, cool. Like, I'm down. Um, and then you guys break up. Um, she turns out to be a terrible person. Mm -hmm. uh, and you want to just like get as far away from her as you possibly can. And... She still has this ticket, though. Right. And concert's coming up, and you're like, all right, well, uh, can I, like, my, my buddy Jake wants to go to the concert with me. Are you down to, like, sell your ticket to him? Concert's completely sold out. Aftermarket prices are off the charts. And she's like, nah, 
I'm not selling this ticket. Uh, if you want to go to the concert, you got to go with me. Out of spite. Out of spite. That's what the Pac-12 Network is doing here. Because, yes, the Pac-12 Network does own the rights to CU-related broadcasts until August 1st. Mm -hmm. But Just because you own the rights to something doesn't mean you have to hold on to it. Right. They could have sold it. They could have, uh, you know, come to some sort of agreement, a buyout, sure, if you will. But no, no, no. They held on like a bitter ex and uh, <laughs> are not releasing us from the grasps of their shitty channel <laughs> and terrible broadcasts. Yeah, man, it's a bummer. Uh, a lot of schools have been announcing uh, Michigan and Ohio State said they're going to be on Fox. Uh, ESPN's still going to have some, but yeah, we're stuck on the Pac-12 network. Um, Oregon State and Washington State really squeezing everything they can out of the last moments of the Pac-12 as we know it. And uh, they're trying to build a quote-unquote war chest to rebuild the conference. That's pretty much where this all comes from. They're getting all the cuts of the money from the NCAA tournament, all the games that the Pac-12 won there. And now they're keeping Colorado in the spring game for some reason. Sickening. Hate you guys. Disgusting. Um, this is your fault, Connor. <laughs> Let him know. Um, there's also going to be a talent show. Going on? Are you going to participate? Should I bust out the old six string? Sure, man. Uh, that will be on, looks like Thursday, I think. Um, but yeah, spring game. Game starts at one. Keep your fingers crossed that there's no snow, no bad weather. We just have a beautiful spring day in Boulder, Colorado. If I participate in the, in the talent show, will you like, Show me some support and pretend like you like the music that I'm playing. Yeah, definitely. All right, thank you. I'll be the loudest one cheering. <clears throat> little Tyler Childers, uh -huh. little Zach Bryan. Sure. All right. I got you. Thank you. I'll try I to need, sing I along. I need that kind of support. Yeah. I'll be the biggest fan in the stands. You have my <laughs> word. Thanks. Um, but then the concert, of course, they're having a, uh, they're bringing a bunch of alumni back too. So they're having an alumni dinner. Um, Maybe more to be announced? I don't know. Is this sufficient to the what it's been built up to be? Yeah. I mean, we're getting wheezy on campus. Yeah. Full concert. Um, trying to see, you know, uh, you know, what, are we, uh, we pulling up backstage? Or <laughs> should I buy some tickets? We do have to do a show after the spring game. I know, but the, it times out perfectly. Spring game at one, right? Yes. Okay. Concerts at 6.30. 7. Doors at 6.30, I think. Uh, yes, I think. So, yes. yeah. I feel like that's perfect timing. 1 to 3 max on the spring game. Mm -hmm. An hour of, like, media after. That's 4. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Show. Mm -hmm. Set up everything. That's, like, 5.30, 6. We're done. All right. Sounds good to me. Then we're, you know... Burning trees with Lil Wayne. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> um, and then I'm sure we'll have a tailgate or something too, right? Yes, we will have a tailgate. So there you go. We um, should do it. All right. No one hold me to this because I'm just thinking out loud. This nope. Is just me this is being, binding. This is, no, this is not binding. <laughs> I have no control over this. I'm just going to toss it out there for events. Tailgate. Uh-huh. Should be lit. Everyone's excited. Football's back. Coors Light, Breck Sp Brew. Yeah. Coors Light, Breck Brew, yeah. Spring game. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun. See everyone. See the new squad. Yep. Then there's like a big gap there if you're not doing a post-game show between that and Lil Wayne. So what about an after tailgate? I like it. We're putting the tail in tailgate. <laughs> we won't be there for much of it, No, we I guess. won't be there at all, but <laughs> everyone else can just go back and like basically pre-game the concert. Especially if we're in that same lot as last year. We're right near the CU Event Center. Yes. Wow, look at you brainstorming. That's just that's the way my brain works. Always looking out for the people. You always are a man of the people, if anything else. Um, that's really it, though. We do have a bunch of visits, of course. We talked about that last week. Um, we'll see who else decides to come down as we go through this month. But, yeah, we're finally in April. It's, this is the month that it happens. We're almost there. 
That's crazy. Also, thoughts on April Fool's Day. I can't be got. Um, so, and like I've just lost the energy for getting others. Worst day of the year. <clears throat> wow, so you can be got. No, it's uh, just... I, I feel like you wouldn't have this much resentment if you haven't gotten got. It's just annoying that I've got to sift through all this bullshit. <laughs> that It's I, really bad. On, oh, April Fool's jokes on Twitter It's terrible. Lame. Yeah. I've already blocked like five fake Adam Schefter accounts today. Jeez. I love that you just hit, get out the block hammer every time. Um, I don't deal with that <clears> shit. I, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I like a good April Fool's prank. Like, I used to get my mom with, like, the, you know, the little, like, back in the day when you had the regular faucet and then the sprayer. Yeah. I used to, like, just put a little piece of tape over that so it yep. sprays back. Yeah. Um, I thought that was pretty funny. I've I've done some, you know, I've done some some pretty well thought out pranks before. Mm -hmm. um, one time I pranked a, a subway. You pranked a subway. Yeah. Uh, I kind of feel bad about it now <laughs> <laughs> because like I was too young to realize like those people don't deserve this bullshit. Yeah. They're putting up. But it was nonsense. really funny. What'd you do to them? <laughs> uh, Can you even share it? I think so. That bad? No, it's not that bad. It's just like, it kind of makes me look like a dick, but I was like 13. Who's not a dick Maybe when 15. you're 13? Uh, exactly. Um, I uh, called them pretending to be uh, corporate. Oh, my God. And told them that Jared was coming for an appearance <laughs> that night. <laughs> and uh, pretended like it had been on the books for, like, months. <laughs> and then I said that, like, he had all of these, uh, these like, really specific requests. I was like, you can't look him in the eyes. Oh, my God. Um, he needs a bowl of green M&Ms, like just a bunch of <laughs> shit like that. So sorry to whoever worked at that subway. You didn't deserve that. <laughs> That's cruel, bro. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it was really funny for me. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out Coors Light. The beer made the chill. The absolute goat. I crushed a few over the weekend. I was able to chill back at home, and I had to grab a few Coors Lights while I was at it. Of course. Uh, come down to the DMVR bar, hang out with us. We got Coors Light on draft. We've got <laughs> the silver bullets. Uh, but Coors Light's just the best. If you need a ba beer to kick back and refresh with, Coors Light is the one. It's the one I reach for. So when you want to hit reset, grab the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart. By going to CoorsLight.com slash DMVR. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Also, sorry, I was watching Leeds or trying to. Uh, shout out to Premier, Met Premier Members <laughs> Credit Union, a.k.a. PMCU. We love anything with CU in it. Yes, we do. Um, except for Creighton. Uh, Are they we, CU? I don't know. Creighton University? Is there another CU? Clemson goes by CU. I heard them chanting oh. that during the tournament. CU, clap, clap. CU, clap, clap. That is... Threw uh, me off. Yeah. Uh, anyways, when you become a new member at PMCU, you get $200 straight up. All you got to do is opening, open up a checking account, sign up for e-statements. They'll just toss you 200 buckaroos. It's that easy. This will be the best money move yet. Head to becomepremier.com to find out more. I love like the idea of... So you're just setting up a checking account, but you're like, oh, I'm going to go to become premier. Like, I'm just becoming premier mm -hmm. right now. Yep. Pretty close to becoming prime. Exactly. Uh, so go over to PMCU and go to becomepremier.com to get 200 bucks. Easy as that. All right, let's talk some recruiting. By the way, I don't know if you saw, but you know, remember that clip we put out last week of the Juju Lewis, like officially on Flipwatch? Yeah. The USC fans, fans found it. <coughs> oh, love that for us. They I mean, were, we were baiting them, right? They were very upset by we that. We were baiting one. them by posting that. Yeah. Were we not? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he was here. He well, was no, I, I don't mean that, like, it's not true. Right. But I just mean, like, when you post that clip on social, yeah. the goal is, like, oh, let's hope this hits USC Twitter and upset some people. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, good bookmark uh, fodder in there if you want to oh, go take man. a look. Yeah, I'll... Uh, I'll have to go tap in on that one. <laughs> um, but we do have some more recruiting stuff to get into. We already talked about um, 2025 four-star IMG offensive lineman, Caden Strayhorn. 
Did you call him Julian or Juju in the tweet? Um, I'll just I think just Julian. Just go to the bus and search, scroll by yeah, media. Exactly. Um, but we got a new kicker also. Did we? We were talking about special teams on Thursday. Okay, um, tell me more. While I look up this, I want to read some good, oh, not quotes, only three quotes? Uh, well, there's one quote in there that kind of set it off, and then there's just a bunch of replies on the tweet now. <laughs> I'm trying to look for a good one. You, you oh, okay, do you. okay. Uh, Daniel Gerlach is joining the team. He is from Boulder, went to Boulder High School. Uh, he played last year for the Colby Mules. Okay. Do you know anything about the Colby Mules? Uh, I would guess they are in Colby, Kansas. I think you are right. Uh, they're D3. I think Colby, Kansas is Broncos country. Like Denver Broncos? Yeah, like Eastern Kansas. Low-key Broncos fans. They just hate the local team and want to lean into the rival or well, what? Well, first of all, Kansas City Chiefs don't even play in Kansas. Right. Um, but it's just like, yeah, I mean, you're closer to the Broncos than you are to the Chiefs. Uh, but Daniel Gerlach played last year at Colby. He only kicked last year. or I'm sorry, he only punted last year, I believe. Uh, played in seven games, attempted 46 punts, had a long of 44, averaged 32.8 per kick. Um, but another leg in the room. Other recruiting news. We've talked about this guy a lot. Uh, Michael Fasusi, the five-star offensive tackle out of Texas. Uh, one of, I think he's actually the second rated offensive tackle in the country. But he put out a top seven, no CU. Tough. But he's coming to the spring game. Weird. I mean, a lot of people already compared it to Jordan Seaton. He took CU off, like, right before his official commitment, though, so I don't know if it's directly comparable. But you're getting the guy I forgot about that. in the facility. Someone says Colby is an M-E, as in Maine? I don't know, man. I don't, I'm not familiar with the Colby Mules. I'm sorry. What, what league is that? I'm trying to learn on the fly here. <laughs> it's not going well. Um, Salty Vets has apparently kicked a 62-yard Oh, field. Waterville, Maine. They are Holy correct. Holy shit. My guy went from Colorado to Maine back to Colorado. Why are they called Colby if it's not even the name of the town? I, you were asking the <laughs> wrong guy, dude. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Colby, Maine. There's also Colby, Kansas. Um, so, yeah, not to be confused with Colby, Kansas, of course. Of course. Common misconception. Or... Colby, I feel like there's a player named Colby something. Uh, Colby, who's the guy who plays for the Bulls? Oh, played at NC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's escaping me. We also have a visit coming from Landon Wolney. He is a 2027 player, which is crazy, but he's coming June 6th. Ready for this one? Yes. <laughs> Give me a minute here. No, okay, just make sure you get it all out in one breath. Jaren Sagapalutale. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me see it. That was, that was good. I think he got it, guys. See that? Sagapalutale. Did you... What? Did you do like a pronunciation guy? No, no, no. Are you sure? I went and... I mean, you could see where he's from right there, from Hawaii. I use that as a context clue. Well, yeah, it's obviously a Polynesian name. So that's all I have. I, I don't know what you want me to say here. That's You better not get good at saying names or else I'm leaving the show. I was never bad at saying names until you got into what? my head. You were worse. Now you're getting better and it sucks. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, anyways, he's a 2025 quarterback out of Hawaii. As I said, James Campbell High School, 6'3", 205, 247 sports composite, three-star, 588th overall player, 35th overall quarterback. So another quarterback coming to town. 
Uh, this one is April 10th, so next week sometime. I think middle of the week. Chat, don't encourage yes. him. It's taking away all the Thank fun. you, Travis. <laughs> Thank you, chat. Shout out to the Toyota chat for always having my back. <sighs> Shout out to the Toyota chat, but not for having your back. <laughs> um, but in this, this is specific case. I like them having your back in all other cases. But this is another quarterback coming to town. Coach Prime's working on finding that next signal caller after Shador heads off to the NFL this year. By the way, did you see Steve Wiltfong today? Yeah. Crazy. <clears throat> okay, so Wilty, as we call him. Um, he was <laughs> sure. pro buffs, wasn't he? He never. Uh, so this is the thing. I don't actually know who's pro buffs and who's anti buffs. Okay. But he never like crossed us. Yes. Yes. So let's keep a close eye on old Wilty boy. To see if he wilts under the pressure of on three being CU haters. Mm -hmm. If he all of a sudden starts hating, then we know it's like a company-wide memo. Yeah, it's a mandated thing. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, he's left to join on three. So, In the uh, handbook when you join. It like says. One anti-Coach Prime <laughs> post per month. <laughs> At least. We got to see, though. Maybe they have bonuses tied to more, like, anti-CU posts. That's why they lean in on it. Social managers got to be getting paid because they really lean into that. Yeah, but maybe Wilty goes over there and just sets them straight. I don't like you calling him Wilty. <laughs> <laughs> I like giving people nicknames. <laughs> you can do better than Wilty. That's like a hockey-style nickname. It just reminds me of the offensive lineman that we had last year, Jack Wilty. Would you rather call me call him that Fong, 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 Fong? <laughs> oh, my God, no. <laughs> should clip that and send it to him, <laughs> see what he thinks. <laughs> um, what else do we got here today? Uh, I think that's about it. Shout out to CU women's basketball, though. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, we got Caitlin Clark, and she did Caitlin Clark things to us. Yeah. I mean, she dictated the entire game. Um, I knew... Sadly, I was here at the DNVR bar watching with a great crowd of people who came to uh, support the squad. But I turned to the people at my, uh, at my table mm -hmm. in, like, the first six minutes. And I was like, that's ah, not going to happen today, guys. Uh, the only way that the Buffs were going to win that, <laughs> the only way that the Buffs are going to win that is, uh, is if they shot really well. And from the start, like, Jalen didn't have the jumper. Yep. Uh, Frida missed our, her first three. Uh, Maddie Nolan missed her first two. And it was just like, oh, okay, well, it's probably not happening today. Um, and hats off to Caitlin Clark because she didn't necessarily have her shot working. But she's just so good off the dribble. Um, she really does remind me so much of Steph in the way that she plays. Mm -hmm. Like, if Steph's not making threes on any given night, he can still drive past you at will. And then right. just... He either finishes at the rim or finds a wide open person when you close down on him. So uh, you got to tip your cap. But I got to say, there are uh, there are people who will just never be happy. Like the same people who are whining and moaning about the men's team not making a Sweet 16 are whining and moaning about the women's team not making the Elite Eight. It's like... You can only be happy with the championship. Is that the only thing that's success in your eyes? Like, yeah, this is a program that was really, really great in the late '90s, early 2000s, and then kind of was dormant for a long time. Honestly, a lot like the men's football team. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and now Coach Payne has like returned them to being a perennial NCAA tournament team, Definitely. which is really the goal. And back-to-back -back Sweet 16 appearances. And we'll look back and say, okay, well, they had back-to-back -back Sweet 16 appearances that were both ended by arguably... Like a generational player. Yes, a generational player and most certainly a top five women's college basketball player of all time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can argue about the margins. I don't really care to. But there's nothing to hang your hat and or nothing to hang your head about. Uh, and I think that most people are okay with that, but I've got, like, all these people being like, this is an embarrassing performance on national television. It's like, come on, man. You can just never be happy. Yep. Buffs only shot 20, 28% behind the arc. Uh, Clark went off for 29 points again. She only went 311 behind the arc, as you said. 
but still went 13 and 22 in her field goals. Yeah, man, shout out to this team. Uh, they were a ton of fun to watch this year, and it's similar to like the men's team. It's like a new era almost for the women's team. Yeah, a lot of the players are going to be moving on. Jalen Sherrod's career ends. She gave a, an emotional, a great speech really after the game about just how far she's come, how far this program's come. Um, it was just really cool to see, and it's just a team that I'm going to remember at least for a long, long time. Yeah, I will too. Uh, that upset over LSU in the first game of the season yep. is one I'll remember forever. Uh, I'll always forget, or I'll always remember, I'll never forget, uh, being in the stadium for that UCLA game when there was 10,000 fans mm -hmm. there supporting the women's basketball team. I had just like chills the whole game. Uh, and I hope they can keep it rolling. Um, Jalen Sherrod, shout out, like a great buff. Just straight up will always be remembered as a great buff. Mm -hmm. uh, absolute dog. And uh, I'm proud of them. I'm really proud of that team and uh, the culture that Coach Payne has built. So we'll see what's, uh, what's next for them. What's next for all of CU basketball, really. It's probably portal season for them both. Yep. We'll see how it shakes out. All right, final break here. Shout out to the wonderful people with the American Raptors at Infinity Park. Shout out the great game of rugby, too. Great game, man. If you're a football fan, I cannot stress this enough. Just watch it. Give it a shot. Mm -hmm. It is a ton of fun. There's a lot of similarities. Um, it's just a great game. I would also recommend, like, before you watch it, like, watch a YouTube video about the rules. Or else you will be lost. It's it's not that complicated, though. It is. It's really not. It is. It's really like a mix between soccer and football. Yes, but it, soccer doesn't have, like, scrums and, like... I, but that's, like, where the football comes in, where there's, like, you know, there's possessions, kind of like drives, <coughs> you know? Uh -huh. um, and there's breaks, you know, kind of like plays, which are the sets like that, the sets from out of bounds. I'm like, telling you, though, if someone doesn't know the rules at all and just shows up blindly, they're going to be confused for at least half the game. Or you should just go to Infinity Park. Uh, the great people out there can help you pick it up pretty quickly. Or subscribe to the DMVR Rugby Podcast. Our guy, Colton Strickler, has you covered there. Um, but, yeah, shout out the American Raptors at Infinity Park. The Raptors remain undefeated at home in 2024 after their stunning comeback against second place <laughs> Yacare? Yacare? Y-A-C-A-R-E. Yacare. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Would have been not even the last thing. I would have never even thought of that. There's just, like, not a place named Yacare. You know I don't I mean? know, you just man. think of, like, the sounds that you normally hear. Actually, don't. Keep, do keep doing the way you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> the Raptors will like to extend their win streak to three games when they return to action at Infinity Park. Uh, this Sunday, April 7th, against Selknam. Kickoff is at 3 p.m. Tickets are only 10 bucks, and kids 12 and under are free. Experience an exciting afternoon of entertaining Raptors rugby in Rugby Town, USA. Shout out, Infinity Park. Also, shout out to Game Time. You guys know the deal. Best way to get tickets if, you sh if you're going last minute, you got to use Game Time. Honestly, if you're going anytime, I would recommend using Game Time, mm -hmm. especially if you don't catch the initial release. Um, they'll probably be spring game tickets on game time if those end up selling out and you don't get in on them. So make sure you're always tuned in to game time. Make sure you download the game time app and use the code buffs when you sign up to get a $20 credit in your account for your first purchase. Uh, terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code BUFFS for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Uh, no, King Mars. I did not give the UFL. Or the, what UFL, USFL, XFL? UFL. I believe it's UFL. That's the mix of the USFL and the XFL. I did not watch. Did you watch it all? Look, <laughs> <laughs> I love football. Yep. I really do. I don't love football enough to watch it when there's home stretch NBA, home stretch NHL, and March Madness all going on. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. I saw Coach Prime gave it a try, though. He did. He was there, hanging out. Supporting The Rock and someone else. Who's the other person who's involved? I don't know. Another friend of Coach Prime's who's famous. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Maybe sometime this offseason I'll give it a chance. All right, to the Toyota chat we go. What's up, guys? D-Mills asked kicker or punter. 
So he only punted uh, last year, but he did kick. He did do both in high school, and his like commitment graphic has a picture of him punting and a picture of him kicking, place kicking too. All right, a real uh, Alex Henry. Don't know who that is. I know. Well, anti shout out because he went to Nebraska, but oh dang, uh, he played for the Eagles. <clears throat> he was a uh, a kicker and a punter. Honestly, I I feel like you should be able to like, if you can save a roster spot by being proficient at both. I think there's a reason that hasn't been done. I think it's the same reason why most pitchers aren't good hitters, right? Yep. You just you don't have enough time uh, to do both. But it just feels like these guys are athletes. Like they should be able to. I don't know, like not all of them, but a lot of them yeah. are like really good athletes. That just feel like you're telling me Justin Tucker can learn how to punt. I mean, he is the greatest kicker of all time. I'm sure he could do it. That's what I mean. Do you think Brandon McManus could do it? Yes. Or Will Lutz. I've seen Brandon McManus. Remember that video of Shador throwing the ball into the bucket? Yeah. I've seen Brandon McManus do that. Like, he's athletic. Wow. Wait, throwing or yes, kicking? Throwing. Oh, okay. I'm going to say kicking would be damn impressive. I saw, uh, oh, God, what was the name? Marquette King kick it once. Mm. Shout out Marquette King. I ran into Marquette King in Vegas. When? Super Bowl week. Really? Yeah. He was shirtless. He was having a good time, huh? <laughs> yep. And then he kind of acted like he knew me, but then he didn't. And, like, I covered him with the Broncos, so I didn't know how to play it. Yeah. And I was like, I know you're cold right now. It was freezing out. And he was just like, nope. And then I was, in my head, I was just like, he's lying. That guy's different. Very. Shout out to Destroying also. He's in the UFL. Yeah. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. Um, I at least saw a kickoff that he did. I saw that highlight from over the weekend. That's about it in terms of my UFL viewing, though. All right. I saw the 64-yard field goal. Yeah, that was wild. Twice. He hit it, was iced, and then hit it again. That's amazing. Uh, Sports Conversations with Chris asked about, did you hear about the three-point line being different lengths in the Sweet 16? Yeah, that was uh, unfortunate. That's disastrous. It's pretty bad. How do you get that wrong? How does no one notice for multiple days? Yeah. Yeah, Games were played on that court before. Several. Yeah. Makes no sense. I... I'm mad about that, and I honestly think, like, they should go back and replay the games. I know they could never do that, but maybe someone can do the research. Like, sure, each team had the game had that side for half, right? Mm-hmm. But imagine you're down by six at halftime. Right. And then you get the short threes, and then you, you, know, you pop off for three and win the game. So, yeah, it was between NC State and Texas. I mean, shout out to both teams who said they were going to play on it for one. Yes. Because I think that's more than enough reason to go, we're not playing today. Like, the court's wrong. <clears throat> they couldn't, I didn't understand how they couldn't just get a new line out there in a couple hours. I, I mean, I know they can replace, like, floors, like, over ice rinks and stuff pretty quickly, but I don't know. Well, just, like, let's get some painter's tape out. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we can do better than painter's <laughs> tape, I think. <laughs> Uh, Nicole B says, Coach said this was his first spring ever. He had 100% show up after break, feeling good about this team. Any particular positions other than linebacker you'd want the Buffs to target in the portal slash camps? Corner? Um, D-line. Definitely. Can never have enough there. I mean, there's teams that will rotate eight on the defensive line sometimes in college. Um, so... Yeah, I think uh, I think they're gonna. I think you're gonna see quite a few. I think more than the average person expects. Um, we have seen twenty one. I think it's twenty one kids into the portal so far, and you know we've talked about it. I think it's about at least ten, fifteen ish more yep. coming. Yep, definitely. Uh, BP asked, do they ever post celebs early coming to the game? To the spring game, um, you just got to show up for that. I don't Maybe someone will post on Instagram. I don't remember anyone saying that last year, though, unless you do. 
Uh, no, they don't. They celebrities don't want their whereabouts made public before they're there. Mm-hmm. Uh, how's Leeds doing, by the way? It is one-one in the sixty-eighth minute. Come on, chaps. Eric asks, any chance Gerlach challenges Mata for the starting spot? No. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Mata's a vet at this point. And he's incredibly trustworthy. And ice cold. What was he last year? Like 13 of 15? Um, The only miss I really remember was the Arizona one. Yeah, he had one more that was blocked. Oh, that's right. Uh, it says... 83%, 10 of 12. Okay, 10 of 12. Yeah, he's going to keep that job, and he's gotten stronger. Uh, 26 of 27 on extra points, too. Nice. Uh, Big Teasy. Shout out Big Teasy. I saw he super chatted during the show on Friday that was uh, pre-recorded. Oh, okay. Shout out. Uh, drop if you still remember what you said, Big Teasy. Throw it in the chat. We'll get to it. He asked, "Who would ice a kicker at 64 yards?" Though, yeah, <laughs> that is pretty wild. I mean, I think if I'm the coach, I would have thought I made the perfect decision when he made it. You know what I mean? It's like right. He's yeah. not making the, like how many times out of ten is he going to make this? So if he made the first one, I'm like, there's no way he can replicate that. Yeah. Imagine if uh, I know you're not a big golfer, but I think you could relate to this. Uh huh. You stand up to the tee box on a par three. Okay. You hit one to ten feet. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, nope. Called timeout right before. Like, <laughs> what do you what do you think your chances are of putting it inside ten again? Yeah, virtually impossible. Yeah. I guess it's different though. Like if you did it to like, I'm not gonna say Tiger Woods because obviously this guy who's playing in the UFL is not the Tiger Woods <laughs> of kicking. Right. Uh, I'll say like, uh, I don't know. Trying to think of just a random scrub golfer. Uh, Stefan Jaeger, who won yesterday. Okay. <laughs> like, he could probably do it twice in a row. He might even feel better the second time. Yeah. But still, I don't think from 64 yards, you're feeling confident in making that twice in a row. I mean, if it was me and if I was coaching the opposite sideline, I'd just be like, go ahead. Like, try it from 64. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, hit the like button. Also, subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to the DMVR YouTube channel. Um, and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, Rezzy. Rezzy slays uh, with the Super Chat. Petition to start calling Travis Heisman Hunter. The Definitely. only thing about that is I think Shador is going to win the Heisman. Fair enough. It would be so cool if we could get two players to New York. I think it's entirely possible. I wonder how many teams have done that. Do you know how crazy of an offseason we've had that we barely talked about Travis? Like, we hardly talk about the best player on the team. I feel like we talk about Travis. I don't think so. Not nearly as much as last offseason. No. That's also because, like... You can only do the how many snaps is he going to play on each side of the ball right. conversation so many times. Right. But, like, he's – Dre just came in and said, like, yeah, he's already putting together a 2025 draft board and Travis is number one. Yeah. Like, this is literally the best player in the country. It's true. Big T's with the super sticker. Do you want the super sticker? Sure. Pair character doing a classic mic drop. Appreciate you, Big Teasy. Um, who's oh, next? did you see that Toyota just pull up? Yeah, that's my new whip. That was sick. Eric asks, if you were to put money on it, who's the next gold jacket to join the CU football coaching staff? Um, I saw everyone speculating after I said that I think there's going to be one more. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> not a gold jacket. <clears throat> so this is not me. Um, giving a hint as to who that might be. Um, I could see Ed Reed. That'd be amazing. Yeah. I don't know what Ed Reed's doing now instead of uh, coaching Bethune-Cookman. I think he's just kind of laying low right now. I haven't seen him do much ever since that. You know, like, this is a very different situation because this man is not Ed Reed, but 
when CU was um, looking for a coach, I guess this would have been after McIntyre. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Darren Cheverini was pushing like really hard to be in that mix. Yeah. And everyone said like, oh, if he wants to be a head coach, he's gonna have to go do it at a at a lower level and then work his way up. Credit to him, he went and did it. Um, he was at Coffee, something like that. I think it, oh Chaffee. <laughs> Chaffee Community College last year went undefeated, won the championship. Now this year he's at like Northeastern Oklahoma or something. Like he's yep. working his way up. Credit yep. to him. Ed Reed does not have to go to Chaffee. No, but I think it would help his resume to say like I've I've worked on the coaching staff with Coach Prime. Um, he's done some stuff before though. Uh, he was like an advisor at Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, build the resume, you know? Mm hmm. I mean, obviously, he had a good enough resume to get the job originally. And if yeah. it weren't for all the politics that went down, like, I'm sure he could get another job again. But I would love to see him work with Coach Prime for a year. Trying to see what he's up to. And obviously, there's a, a selfish uh, part of that, too, where I just think it would be sick to have him with us. Ed Reed would be tight. Um, I mean, we've already had Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin. Who else has stopped by? Coach Ocho? Not a gold jacket, but yeah. Oh, true. Really? I don't think so. I don't think so, bro. Are you confusing him with his celebration where he put on the fake gold <laughs> jacket that's a 20 question mark question mark? That was sick. Um, T.O. is in. T.O., of course, yeah. I'll say T.O. then. We have the greatest corner of all time. We have one of the best defensive tackles of all time. Let's cash in on these skill positions. Let's, uh, let's get T.O. in. I don't think he's a gold jacket guy, man. He is not. That's crazy to me. Wide receiver uh, Hall of Fame talk is going to get very crowded. Yeah, because there are just so many good hall, uh, good wide receivers, and really like two thousand on. Mm-hmm. There's always been great wide receivers, but it just keeps on like getting more and more and more. And there's players that are putting up numbers now that would have made them a hall of famer in like the eighties that yep. won't even get a sniff. Yep. Shout out DT. Yep. Um, that's just like the seven on seven era of football. I think though, like coming to light. Yeah. All these guys just, I mean, that's what they're doing. They're out there running routes, catching passes, playing seven on seven from the time they're 10, 11, 12. It's true. Uh, Transforming Eagle asked, did any of 2023 CU portal entries get stuck in the portal? Uh, Several. (laughs) Yes. I want to say it was like five or six when we made that graphic. That were stuck? Yeah. When lot. we did, like, where they went. There's a lot more. Really? Yeah. That never... Okay. Um. Here, let me pull it up if I can. I mean, we had, what, 60-some guys into the portal? Yeah, it was a lot. You're going to have a hard time finding that. Is there any more questions? From Jamel, while Jake looks that up, two players are wearing 77. Who wins the number? Well... It's Jordan Seaton against who? Kareem Harden had that last year, I think. I think. Okay, well, I think that question answers itself. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, man, looking through here, one, two, three, four, five. It was literally on our graphic. Six. We made where all the conferences they went. Mm -hmm. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. It's great cinema right here. Never found okay, a team. Ten. Okay. And that's the that's the portal. Yeah. It's a risk going in there, man. Yeah. It's like going to um, speed dating. <laughs> There's a chance you might go home without a date. Um. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, I don't think Willie Gaines got picked up. Anything else today? I think that's all we got. 
Uh, when is Zay's Pro Day? I think it's Wednesday. All right. The 4th, I believe. Do we know where it is? No, I haven't heard. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know what's going on tomorrow. Yeah, we still haven't heard from <laughs> yeah. CU about what's going on this week. Yeah. So we might have to push the show back. We might come with press conference content. We might not. Stay tuned. Also, Friday, we're off. Wait, last thing. Okay. Total aside, self-serving, but this has worked for me before. Does anyone have any remedies for popping your ears? Not like your classic, like, oh, like, blow out of your nose. Like, some sort of, like, crazy, like, give me, like, the witchcraft (laughs) of how we pop our ears. Because I have not been able to pop my ears since we got off the flight from Vegas. I just blow my nose like crazy. Okay, again, none of the regular shit. That's that's how I that's how because I've been I was dealing with a lot with that um, around the winter. Felt like I had like a like my ear was in a fishbowl yes, for dude. most of the. It's driving me crazy. I actually thought something was wrong with me. Me too. <laughs> but then I started like blowing my nose more and again. I'm good. People just throwing out regular shit like Sudafed. You don't think I've tried Sudafed <laughs> yet? It literally is the best. Well, I've been <laughs> popping Sudafed like it's bubble gum. Uh, and I've also tried chewing gum. So anyways, if anyone has a remedy, DM me on any social media platform. Luis said, go see a doctor. <laughs> now that is a good idea. <laughs> Mr. Hillsman also, go see a doctor. What are they going to do? Uh, you, maybe you have a buildup of earwax. Who knows? Is that also, wh- okay, so I have a friend who's... Also, I resent that it's comment. Go away. <laughs> Drive to the mountains. That seems like it might be worse. So when I, uh, when we were in Utah, I drove, right? Because it was over Thanksgiving. And I drove back. And that's when it started getting bad. And I'm going through, you know, the front range. Mm-hmm. I almost like cried with how much pressure was in my head. That's going why through I'm the afraid mountains. of going. Yeah, I would not recommend that. <laughs> um, I always... I think there's like a chance when I go from my, my apartments on the 10th floor. Uh huh. Like maybe when we're going down the elevator, I'll no, get a chance. We're here. not at Circa. That's <laughs> yeah, not enough. That messed my ears up too. Not going to lie. The elevators at Circa, because one, Circa is so tall, and two, how fast those elevators go, I had to make sure every time I got down to the bottom floor, my ears were popped and good to go. Otherwise, I knew it was going to be a bad time that day. That comment from Roth Jerry is ap- actually insane. Um. Okay, well, if it's not fixed by tomorrow, I'll go to the doctor. Oh, l- last thing. This is what I was going to say. Um, my friend, his uh, girlfriend is, like, studying to become a doctor or something. She told me to get, like, I think they're called neti pots or whatever to clean out your sinuses. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are great. Yeah. That shit looks crazy. That's what I was told to do. I didn't do it, but I was damn close to going to get one because I was going crazy. Someone, yeah, see, I need a home remedy. I don't want to go to the doctor. Um, also, I have also looked at Google. Travis said, get so drunk that you throw up. Mm. I'm, you know what? <laughs> I'm out of other options at this point. D. Mill, D Mills just says, have me punch you in the ear. <laughs> that seems bad. <laughs> All right. Um. Update tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs> um, we will be off Friday, by the way. It's opening day. Dope. And I won't be here Thursday. So be prepared. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's go Buffs. Love you guys. We all silly like the mayor.